If you're seriously ill or critically injured. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? He's struggling to breathe. Very seriously injured. In some of the UK's most remote places. Oh, 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 I can't see you. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. There's just been an accident on the M1 motorway. It's on fire and it's gone into the railway bridge. Your life is on the line. How far did he fall? About five metres. He's intubated and ventilated. You need some of Britain's most elite medics. Is there any serious bleeding? Yes, there is, yeah. Calm, feel, legs, anything below my neck. We're in a remote location in the middle of a woodland. They've broken the back. The speed of the Yorkshire Air Ambulance can make the difference between life and death. Hey, your discretion, take off. Yeah, Fedest 09 lifted. Today, a farmer is badly injured after being attacked by a herd of cows. Trying to get into the, in the ball to get out of the way, but yeah. they were, they were literally on top of you. A woman is suspected of breaking her back after being knocked off a polo horse. Oh, 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 I can't see you. And a retired fire officer has to be cut out of his car after a head-on collision. It can be quite uh, frightening as uh, the roof's been taken off the car. Farming is the lifeblood of the Yorkshire countryside. Livestock helps generate £17 billion a year. But farmers live with the risks of working with animals that can kill. At the Yorkshire Air Ambulance Base, the dispatcher is listening in to a 999 call from a farm near Moulton. Is the patient breathing? He's struggling to breathe. He's just been knocked down by some cows. Piloting Helimed 98 for this job is Andy Hall. Paramedic Kit von Mikvitz will be navigating. Tell him to keep himself as still as he can. Yeah, he is, but his face is in an awful mess. Uh, Sierra Echo. Sierra Echo. 843. 843. 682. There's a light headwind of about five knots, but still about, should make 120. It's the speed of this helicopter that saves lives. 30 miles at 15 minutes, Matt. In the small village of North Grimston, this herd of cows has gone rogue. They knocked down a stockman and repeatedly stamped on his head and chest. Paramedic Matt Syrett knows the patient is lucky to be alive. Cows are very heavy animals. When they hit you, when they trample you, they make a lot of damage. The body's like a grape, if you like, compared to a cow. And when it stands on it, it sometimes just goes pop. A desk from Element 98. Do you have an update on this patient, please? The patient's been crushed and trampled by approximately five cattle. Ooh. He's got pain to his back over his ribs area, mainly down the right hand side. The patient had multiple facial injuries. In the UK, over 400 people have been badly injured or killed by cows in the last five years. And it sounds like today's victim will almost certainly need specialist treatment. See the lady in the field that's just come down on uh, 3 o'clock. Look at that, Pat. Yep, wires on the right. Yep. Where's the fence on the left? 9 8 one, Hello. How are we doing? 53-year-old Phil Marwood was forced to play dead as hooves rained down. He's experiencing so much pain, he's unable to lie down. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. His wife Sally is by his side, and local paramedics are so concerned they want him flown to hospital. Is it difficult, Philip, when you take a breath in? Yeah, or... it's terrible. Yeah. In, yeah, on one particular side? This side, right on. Your right hand yeah, side. Yeah. Time is critical. Ooh. You've had a listen. I've had a listen. There's not a lot of air entry, but there is air entry. Okay, do you mind if I have another listen? Is that all right? Crack on, feel free. Smashing. Thank you. I know you can't take deep breaths, Philip, but best yeah. breath you can. Phil's fighting for breath. <laughs> My colleague's right, you have got, when you're breathing mm. in, I can hear air all round. Yeah. What the problem is, is you've probably got some broken ribs, which right. means it's difficult yeah, to actually yeah. take a full breath. And that's it, well, yeah, yeah. All right. Trying to get in a, in a ball to get out of the way, but yeah. they, were, they were literally on top of you. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. How much pain are you in at the moment? Well, nine. Nine out of ten? Yeah. OK. Uh, Phil's pain and difficulty breathing could be a sign of serious internal bleeding. 
Matt is also concerned about spinal damage. Tell me if it's hurting when I'm pushing. The pain is all right on it, where you are. Yeah. Not wrong with my back, it's all in my ribs. So you've no in your spine no, no, here? nothing down there. All to your... That, that there. Phil has been tending to livestock for 40 years. He and his boss have always known the dangers of working with cattle. There's one especially. It was her last year as well, and she's got the better on us at the finish. You never know what they're going to do with cows. They're worse than bulls, these cows. Once one starts, they all, all the lot come at you. I followed the ambulance, and I thought, oh, I have a feeling that's going to our house. First time something as major as this has happened. Yeah. Just down here. Just there. Fair enough. All right. It snapped me, got me in my mouth, but all my teeth gone. My teeth are hurt. No problem. Have you ever had morphine before? No. No. Not allergic to all. Is, uh, if you don't mind as well, can we have some of your own dance drop? If you just imagine they've got solid hooves, half a ton pressing down on one spot, it could do a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of damage. The cows have almost certainly broken several of Phil's ribs and his jaw. It was a terrifying experience. I just couldn't get out of work. Yeah. You are very lucky. You know what I mean? That's that's I thought I'd had it ring, to be quite honest. Yeah. I thought, yeah. thought. Don't think about it then. Uh, at the moment, it's a difficult case because um, although Phil's been trampled on and he's got lots of right side of chest injuries and facial injuries, because of how difficult he has in breathing, we can't lay him down. So, what we're going to do is we're going to sit him up and brace him against the backrest and uh, try and keep his back straight like that. Do you want to try the trolley on the grass? Should we give it a go? Yeah? Phil's life could still be in danger. The paramedics can only guess at the internal injuries cattle weighing close to a ton have inflicted on their patient. Time is of the essence. He's still 30 miles from the scans and x-rays he desperately needs. Is that OK, yeah? All right, then? But the way is, Phil would just go up that direction, just left that big tree, I think. Good. Go in. Phil is being flown to the James Cook Hospital in Middlesbrough. A full trauma team is awaiting his arrival. Orthopaedics. Could all be some uh, vascular surgeons as well due to uh, the nature of the chest injuries. They may, want, they may want to have a look at him. He's got fractures to his jaw, some of his facial cheekbones and also to his chest on the right hand side. Um, and they'll all be confirmed by scans when we get there. And the farmer may need emergency surgery. His life is still on the line. At nearly 700 square miles, and with peaks rising to over 2,000 feet, Yorkshire's national parks are an irresistible draw for people wanting to take on the Pennine Grit, on foot or on ropes. And today, there's a major rescue operation underway after reports of a climber badly injured at Brimham Rocks in Nidderdale. Ambulance service. Is the patient conscious? Yes, he is. He's got back pain and neck pain. He's fallen off the rock. The climber is at the bottom of a 30-foot rock face. He can't feel his legs. Is there a crew on the uh, There's a, a response driver. Lands paramedics are on their way, along with a mountain rescue team. But low cloud is making this a hazardous flight for pilot Ian. And it's going to get worse. The last we heard from the weather at Leeds was pants. They're just uh, 9999, uh, nine, just over the scene, uh, Freeman Rocks, and just looking for the army. Go ahead, visual. Might as well put it in the middle and really throw the car park out, eh? The climber was found by a family visiting the rocks. He's fallen from the second ledge, so the first ledge. Yeah. He's landed on his back. He didn't lose consciousness. He's got pain in his neck and his lower back. Uh, and he's got pain in his feet. Okay. Thank you. Staff are used to accidents here, but they're rarely this serious. Primer Rocks is very popular with both walkers and climbers. Um, it's a popular tourist attraction. It's also easy for people to go climbing on, uh, and people are often seen sort of wobbling off some of the rocks. And this gentleman's told me you've sort of fallen from that ledge. And what, you have this rucksack on your back? No one you saw him fall. So he's fallen straight backwards and landed exactly where you are at the moment. OK. Whereabouts is the majority of your pain? Lower back, is it? 
Paramedics Lee and Tony are relying on the climber's account. He's complaining of loss of sensation in his legs and tingling in his arms. Classic signs of paralysis. You will your feet. You can't wiggle them, can you? Okay. Uh, obviously, that's a concern that he could have uh, sustained some kind of uh, spinal damage, uh, particularly after a fall as high as that. Many patients with these symptoms never walk again. At Brimham Rocks in the Yorkshire Dales, paramedic Lee wants to give morphine to a climber who's feared paralysed. I'm just going to put a little plastic tube into the back of your bit, veins the back of your hand, OK? Yeah, OK. Sharp needles. You don't like sharp needles? OK, it's just, it, unfortunately, it does involve a sharp scratch. <sighs> Struggle here, cos you're not... You're a bit cold, aren't you? I think I'm going to have to cut your jacket, unfortunately. Your body is... The thing is, if I don't cut it off here, they'll probably cut it off in hospital, that's all. Don't cut it. Don't cut it. <laughs> I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to, fella. Let's cut it off here, then at least we can give you some pain relief, OK? We need to... I'm going to have to cut it off, OK? Do it on the seam. Do it on the seam? All right. When patients are in pain, damaged clothing is usually the last thing on their minds. So I've got to go to your jumper as well, fella, as well. But Lee and Tony know that seemingly irrational behaviour like this could be explained by a head injury. Right, fella, there we are. I can get you around now. Just relax your arm first, fella. That's it. Just try and Ow, ow, ow. Take it out. Ow, 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 ow. It's not the best friends, is it? You bastards. I always said if you find a swear word or a combination of swear words that I've never heard before, I'd be impressed. All right. It helps to be thick-skinned in this job. Most climbing accidents involve people who lack proper training. This man's equipment certainly suggests he's experienced, but his physique seems unusual to the paramedics. He hasn't got very good surface veins, um, and given that he's a climber, which is it's a bit of a rare thing, really. You got absolutely nothing. We can't find any veins. So I got some gas in there. That's what they give to ladies during childbirth. Okay, so it's got a proven track record, if you know what I mean. It took a, a minute or two to take effect. All right. That gas in there is going to be your best friend now until we get to hospital. Okay. Mountain Rescue have arrived to help carry the climber to the air ambulance. He's complained a lot of pain around his lower back and pelvic region. So we're going to package up onto the scoop, yeah. um, and when we do that, we're going to put a pelvic binder around here. Please have a look with a view on it, so that's fine. I'm going to roll you onto your back, OK? Roll. Keep taking the insects. Just roll onto your back, nice and relaxed for us. The team are taking every precaution to protect what could be a broken back or pelvis, but the climber's strange behaviour continues. It's not very nice, is it? Their main concern, though, is that the climber still has no sensation in his legs. It's a very worrying sign. You can feel that. You can't feel that. What about the other leg? You can't feel that. What about his knees? Can you feel that? He's showing all the symptoms of a severe trauma to the spinal cord. If so, he wouldn't be the first climber to have been paralysed on these rocks. Watch your heads on this branch. The, branch. the accident could change his life forever. He'll be taken to the major trauma unit at Leeds General Infirmary. Scans will reveal the extent of his injuries. It's the weekend in Yorkshire, and it's time for five million people to relax, even if the wintry weather's not up to much. It's a great day for DIY, but that's bad news for the air ambulance crew, and an amateur tree surgeon already needs urgent help. Hello, ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? He is. He was up a tree, Sorry, cutting please. his branches off and he's fallen. He can't move. So do not move them unless it's in danger and do not splint any injuries. No. Oh, don't move him. She says don't move him. DIY injures nearly a quarter of a million people a year in the UK, and pruning a tree has almost cost today's patient his life. 
With 11 years experience on the air ambulance, paramedic Pete Valance is used to dealing with accidents like this. We're on his way to a uh, location only about five minutes away from the base. Uh, reports of someone falling out of the tree. Crew on scene uh, are requesting us because the patient's showing signs of some uh, neurological deficit. In Murfield, just outside Huddersfield, 47-year-old Judd Bruce is lying in his drive. He's fallen more than 15 feet flat onto his back. Oh. The impact was big enough to break the stone on top of this wall. I've got him. Where that smoke's rising. Yeah. Oh, I've got it, yeah. Nice indication. Nice to pop some smoke for you. Oh, we got access. Yeah, it looks like there's a style or something at the, at the end. After a bit of clambering, Pete's the first to get a description from the land crew paramedic. Hey there, how are we doing? You all right? I've got Judd. Hi, Judd. This oh, yeah. is the tree. I've got to put it at maybe 15 to 20. Not knocked himself out. Significant pain, lower back. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start to press into the, uh, oh. the firmness around here. And you were just stood on a branch where you, as it's gone? It, it must have been a dead branch up yeah. there. Put my foot on it, it just snapped yeah. like balsa wood. Yeah. Judd's wife, Natalie, is understandably upset. Kept on getting people coming round, basically, and saying, oh, can we cut it and cut it? And basically, well, we do it ourselves. So, basically yeah. thought, blow it, I've had enough of this. And he decided to do it today, and he went down. Model of the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave it to the professionals. <laughs> so, a bit of a wall repair to do as well, once you get back there. Oh, yeah. bugger. Oh, just fall yeah, but you can remember everything that's yeah, happened. Totally. It seems Judd's been lucky to avoid a head injury, but his back and pelvis are a different matter. He's been given a strong painkiller. Do you feel any easier since you've had that morphine? I mean, breathing's easier, but... Oh, the pain. Did you manage to check his abdo at all while yeah. you were around there? Giving it a squeeze while he's been on this yeah. side, and he seemed fine. Yeah, seemed so, fine. like you say, mainly just sort of yeah. sacral. Yeah but quite intense pain when you yes. felt round there. Preparing Judd for the flight is not going to be pleasant. We're going to need to just move you across onto your back at oh, some stage. Yeah, yeah. I think that initial time when we move you around, you're going to get some pain from that. You know, because where you're falling, it's right at the bottom of your back that's yeah. hurt. We've got a girdle as well that's going to go around your pelvis. We just need to put that on. It's like a splint that just holds it in place. OK. A fractured pelvis can be fatal if major blood vessels become damaged by broken bones. The team must move him very carefully. No rush, guys, so just tell me when you're ready. Let's go slowly, yeah. Okay? Okay, so we'll go and move then. Ready, steady, and move. Just ease, ease your legs down for us if you can. Where's that hurting now? Bottom of your back. Bottom of your back still. Okay. It's agony. Is it? How many out of ten? Say eight. Okay. He's in quite a lot of pain at the moment, so he's had some good painkillers. The important thing now is just to keep him nice and warm, keep him comfortable for the, for the journey to LGI. So he's taken quite an impact from quite a height, so he could have some uh, quite, quite serious injuries. The clock is ticking. The faster Judd arrives in the trauma centre at Leeds General Infirmary, the better his chances of a good recovery. Because he's got such uh, severe pain, midline on actually on the spine itself we can't see if there's any underlying damage there it's not showing any deficit you know with sensation at the moment which is a good sign but we just want to keep him as still as possible so we can determine if, if he's actually fractured any of uh, the bones in his spine Judd is one of 87,000 gardeners whose hobby lands them in hospital each year, most of them after falls. In the next few hours, he'll find out whether he's damaged his spinal column. After his DIY tree surgery went badly wrong, Judd is now in need of a surgeon himself. He could face an operation and months of physio. In the skies south of Harrogate, a 21-year-old climber is being airlifted to Leeds General Infirmary after being found lying at the bottom of a cliff at Brimham Rocks. Paramedic Lee Greenwood has been treating him for a suspected broken pelvis and spinal injury. It's reported to me that you, you, you can't feel any sort of sensation sort of from the, the waist downward. His package up is immobilised, so we'll leave it to the doctors to uh, reassess it. Him for a CT scan. Okay. But Lee and the crew are already thinking that something doesn't add up about this man's story. 
Fortunately, he can't hear over the noise of the engines. Uh, he's travelled out from Middlesbrough by himself. Um, he told me it took a four hour journey to get here. He's brought all the climbing here. He's rigged up for climbing with the, uh, all the gear in his bag and a helmet. Uh, but he's come by himself, which I think in, in, in climbing circles is a bit of a, is a, bit of a big no no. Um, but he's a, he's a bit of a character, I'll give him that. Well, he's definitely not hurt his neck anyway, because he's trying to look out a window. What clear this way? Clear your side, clear left. Thank you. Edis from Helium 99, we're on the deck at LGI over. The climber is taken straight to Resus. There are just four major trauma hospital bays like this in the whole of West Yorkshire. Population, two million. He fell from about six or seven metres while rock climbing by himself. He's not moved since the point of fall. Okay, so always fight to here central. He's being examined by some of the country's top trauma specialists. But the results of their diagnostic tests will shock his rescuers. At the Air Ambulance Base in North Yorkshire, the crew of Helimed 99 are about to receive some very surprising news about their last patient. A climber who claimed to have fallen 30 feet. Oh, cheers, keepers, keepers in. The yeah, team like have been victims of an elaborate hoax. It sounds like that this patient actually could uh, have made an hoax call to us and, and feigned the fact that he's had, uh, had a, a fall. Try the lights up, out. Oh. It landed in a location which went with a story that had been uh, climbing. It got all the, the climbing kit on, found by a member of the public. So there was nothing really to suggest anything other than that he was a genuine patient, but it doesn't seem like that might be the case. Apparently he's a, a serial offender with the ambulance service. He's been flagged up at um, Lee John Infirmary and Hull and James Cook. Um, and our team at the Yorkshire Ambulance Service are now going to um, pay him a visit along with the police and his social worker. Sometimes these people have ongoing psychiatric problems and you've got to take that into account and sometimes it's just malicious calls uh, so the, the latter I've got no sort of sympathy with those people whatsoever they're just wasting emergency service time and they're putting other people's life in jeopardy. We're about to the majority of your pain your back is it once In the UK the ambulance service receives thousands of hoax calls every year you have to treat how you find the patient, and um, we, we treat him as we would treat any um, guy who's fallen from a rocket at certain heights. Nearly 20 people were involved in this man's rescue. The land crews and public were exposed to the risks of emergency vehicles travelling at speed. The air crew flew in poor weather conditions. Well, the time worse is out there. I mean, the helicopter was dispatched to it. The even scrambled Wharfdale fell rescue, who sent um, a number of their resources to the region to give us a hand to lift him off the rock face. The total cost, including an hour at the trauma centre, was over £20,000. Everyone involved hopes it's the last time this man makes a fake emergency call. The Yorkshire Air Ambulance covers 5,000 square miles, from the coast to the Pennines, from the Dales to the Moors, as well as some of the North's largest cities. But the size of the county often makes actually finding a patient the hardest part of the job. What's the address of the emergency, please? She's come off her bike. She's on the Ripon 2 Group of Road. Group of. Without detailed local knowledge, pinning down a location can take time. How you spell Glowthorpe? G R I L. So G R E W E L T H O R P. It's right on a mickery turning. 2,000 times a day, Yorkshire's 999 operators ask this question. And what's the address of the emergency, please? It's in Woods, it's called Thames, it's the jumps in Rother Valley. I'm just outside Witherley Village. Where, sorry, what village? Witherley. 
but increasing numbers of callers now have GPS devices to give emergency services an exact grid reference of the casualty. Sierra Echo 985, the And that's what's happening today. Helimed 98's being scrambled to a hillside in the Yorkshire Wolds. It's a 40-mile flight, but thanks to the 999 caller, paramedics Pete Valens and Andy Armitage know exactly where their patient is lying. In a field on a remote country lane, 45-year-old Donna Hammond is lying injured. She was exercising a polo pony when another horse reared up and landed on her. She hasn't moved since the accident, and it's feared she's broken her back and pelvis. It's looking like Helimed 98 will arrive before the land ambulance. Is it a road or a footpath it's on? A road, it's a road. Ah, oh, right. It's on a side road and crews could very easily drive past this and be, be miles away from the incident by the time they receive further information. Uh, overhead, you know, people don't always make themselves noticeable to us, so it can be difficult as well, but no not nearly as difficult as by This is a silver and a blue car parked up there, Jason. The detail of it. These are blue cars. Yeah, that's it then, yeah. Look at this straw on the ground, but we can go with it. Just live with it. There we go, it'll be over in a second. Do I tell my missus? <laughs> Hell, we're there. Luckily, a local GP was passing. She's on fluoxetine, she's allergic to dysphagesic, she has lower back problems she's a chiropractor for. So she's come off the she's got blood from this loss. Left loss. Oh, you there. Quite a lot of. Wa not watery, but probably just mucus. I don't think it's watery, yeah. but the blood from the left nostril. She can, her other hand that's underneath is going a bit tingly now, but she'll yeah. be able to I'm, move toes, hands, everything. Lower okay, back. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. How are we doing down there? <laughs> we'll try and get you off this damp floor as soon as we can. Did you come off at speed or? No, I was walking. Where would you be hurting most now? If we go down from yes, your head? Yes, my back. Yeah. This bad fall will have compounded the back injury Donna already has. It's going to be a delicate process to safely transfer her to the spinal board. So we'll get scooping, mate. Yeah. We'll, uh, yeah, we will. You've been better, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. The man who phoned for an ambulance, John Haig, saw the accident. The horse reared up and then she fell off and the horse rolled right on its back. It took some time for the horse to get back on its feet and then ran away. Starting to hurt there? No. Are you sure? Because you look to grimace a bit. No, just there. Just there, OK. And that's your normal area. Yeah. yeah right. what, what's the actual problem you've got? Uh, well, due to the horses. Right. Uh, I had a slip disc which trapped the sort of nerve, but... And then I okay. came off a couple of times. Oh, yeah. I don't oh you make a habit of this, do you? Not really. <laughs> what about actually round your legs? Right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What we'll do, because of that, Quite often when you land on your side, you know, because the bone's not fully solid in the middle there, you can just jar it and it'll cause discomfort. While they're trying to keep Donna calm with a bit of humour, Pete and Andy know that their patient could be one wrong move away from permanent paralysis. Her previous back problems increase the chances of a serious spinal injury. Can I bring this leg in? If I get them... What I'm trying to do... We've got a hard board behind you, so we're going to roll you over in this position. On yours, on there. Everybody ready? Ready, steady. Roll. Oh, 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 I can't. Oh, yes. Just keep moving. Ready, steady, and roll. All the way down. That's it. Better on back, aren't we, then? That's great stuff. Oh, I don't, I don't. OK. I don't sweat my leg. No. Right, OK. Well, bring your leg That's... down, you're ready. Where's that hurting you, your hip? It's back of my pelvis. Right, if I just take that... Just nice and steady. Bring the other leg round as well, just so we're doing everything symmetrical. That's it. They'll use a special binder in case she's also broken her pelvis. You know, I said we need to take these jeans to put this pelvic binder yeah. on. Yeah. So we're just going to... Just check I've got pants on. Just for your modesty. Well, we're going to have to pop it on anyway. I know, but just check I've got knickers on. <laughs> a blanket screen is found just in case Donna isn't dressed for the occasion. You happy there? Have I got pants on? You have, yes. Okay, mate, we're just tightening this up. There's so much trouble for you all. It's all right. Can't be helped, can it? We get used to you, horse riders. <laughs> Keeping us busy. So on lift then. Ready, steady, and lift. 
I'm so sorry about this. All right, don't worry. Apologise, not a problem. In these circumstances, it's usually best to blame the horse. In this case, Billy. I'm going to punch Billy the nose. Billy's a bit of a cheeky bugger. Oh, he's got history, has he? He's, no, he's lovely. He can be a bit of a at times. You know, That's like... great. And we feed round. Ooh, I've never been in a helicopter now. Right, I'm going to give you a spot of morphine. The strong painkiller will make Donna's flight to hospital a lot more comfortable. Despite her pain, her mind is still with the polo ponies that landed her in the air ambulance. Oh, shit. What? I ain't bedded up the top stalls yet. They are booked out, just haven't bedded them up. But thanks to the passing delivery driver, at least they're not still charging around the countryside. I've seen the horses come running up the road, one with a saddle on, we out the woman on. I've gone and caught the horses and took them back to the farm. They're going to have to get used to someone else mucking them out for the foreseeable future. Donna is on her way to Hull Royal Infirmary for scans and possible spinal surgery. It's a busy day in the skies over North Yorkshire. But for the air traffic controllers in the tower at RAF Topcliffe, one flight is more important than any of the others. Three floors down is the air ambulance base, covering the vast moors and dales. Topcliffe Tower, Helimed, 9 and Alpha with four on board, requesting engine and motor start outbound to Richmond. Ah! A 999 call reports that a man has fallen 60 feet off Richmond's castle. I'll do it my pump way. What's your grid? November Zulu, 170006, Richmond Castle. Paramedics Andy Armitage and James Stubley head straight to the helicopter. It's a stand in. The regular yellow one is in for essential servicing. Element 9 and Alpha, take a rear special present position, surface wing 21012, cross all runways. SAS pilot Chris Attrill has them airborne within minutes. En route to Richmond, roger. Roger, roger, roger. Limited information, we've been tasked to 20 on your old mail that's gone down an embankment at approximately 60 feet. But there is quite a steep an escarpment, runs down from the top of the castle walls, quite steep looking at it. It sounds serious. The crew are already planning this patient's transit to hospital. Presuming we're James Cook from here, aren't we? Yeah, we'll be mate from here, we'll. Yeah. And it's clearly a busy day elsewhere. A head-on car smash has happened within miles of the top cliff base they've just left. The timing couldn't be worse. 13 us in weather. Yeah, go ahead, Lee. Yeah, we're uh, 99 the boat for the speed turnover. Now I've sent them on that other job. Are we available? <laughs> the second air ambulance, Helimed 98, will have to fly north. Hey, it's nearly 50 miles from its base, near Wakefield, to the scene of the crash. Back in Richmond, there's no obvious place for Helimed 99 to land near the castle. I think the police are expecting you to put it there in that gap in car park. Possibly, but then again, they're going to blow the shit out of everyone. Yeah, well, we're uh, struggling to land anywhere in the vicinity. The patient looks to be on the DCA. Can you try and contact and see whether or not they can uh, move to a separate location for us to obviously be able to land? Chris chooses a safer alternative, but the groundsman won't be happy. What's the bed? That uh, cricket green's just been freshly cut. <laughs> <laughs> The local ambulance crew have already oh, managed to get the injured man onto a spinal board. He's fallen about 60 foot. Well, he's rolled most of the way uh, until he's got to the final 10 foot when it's been a sheer drop onto concrete. Complaining of a lot of right hip okay. pain. We've pelvic splintered him. OK. Um, and also uh, a lot of pain in the middle of his back, central. OK. Stick your detail on there. I just want to make sure our vehicle's ready. Yeah. Yeah. The patient has told the crew he's suffering from the classic symptoms of a serious back injury. But it's an easy diagnosis for James. He knows who this man is. I knew it would be. What? I knew it would be. You know, the regular guy that's been chucking himself. Oh, it's him? Yeah. It's the hoaxer, 
found three weeks earlier at the bottom of a cliff at Brimham Rocks. He walked out of hospital uninjured. This gentleman's told me he's you've sort of fallen from that ledge. Now he's the reason 85-year-old motorist Bob Morn is still waiting for help from the air ambulance. Trapped in his seat with several broken bones, his life is in real danger. It'll be 25 minutes before pilot Steve Wardby in the other helicopter reaches Bob. And he knows how serious accidents on the road to Yorkshire's famous White Horse can be. The road today going from Sutton under Whitestone Cliff up to the top of Sun Bank is very, very steep. And there have been lots of accidents just on the bottom. is a very sharp hairpin corner. Bob is a retired fire officer. It appears he lost control of his car and collided head-on with a 4x4. He has chest pain and may have broken his pelvis. Now his former colleagues are working to free him. And at last, Helimed 98 is arriving. OK, I've got your trees on your right side. Yeah, yeah. Over the hedge just fine, Steve. Thank you. I'll just get it clear right. Come on, a bit more. Yeah, I'd Good there, Lee. That's yeah, it. There you go. Wonderful. Hi, guys. Right. Right, so this is Robert, who's 85 years old. The driver of this car just saw him being across the road. He said he felt sleep going through the last village, but we don't know if he's just nodded off at the wheel. Right. And he's in atrial flutter. I don't know if it's normal for him. Bob had a heart attack a few months ago. It's unclear if this was a factor in the accident. So you have warfarin and beta yeah, blockers. And have you had warfarin since your heart attack then? Yeah. yeah. Can I have another listen to your chest? I know they've all checked before, but it's just a, a double check. There's all possible he could have had some sort of medical event prior to having the accident. Um, there's reports that he said he felt quite unwell. He was, he was, he was driving through Thirsk um, on his way up to see the gliders today. Uh, it would be such a nice day. The chest pain could also be explained by a broken sternum, but the main worry is the pain in Bob's pelvis. Keep your head nice and straight for us, Robert. Just letting fire lads get you out. But what we're going to do is going to give you a bit of pain relief, OK? We'll give you a bit of morphine, OK? Because once, obviously, fire guys start moving you, these aches and pains can get a bit worse, OK? Bob has performed many life-saving rescues himself in his long career as a fire officer, but he's never been on the receiving end. To avoid further injury, Tony and the team are going to have to be very careful when they move him. Back in Richmond, the hoaxer who took the chopper that should have been sent to the car smash is now posing a dilemma for paramedics James and Andy. Um, what's his plan then? Are we attacking him? Just complaining here. Uh, he's buying oh, uh, he's back pain and um, right hip pain. It's him, isn't it? Pelvic bind. Yeah, he is. So I don't know what we want to do. What if he really has hurt himself this time? Who attack him? He's going to cry wolf yeah. too many times yeah. and he's going to end up... He is going to end up... Yeah, I think if it's been witnessed... I think that's, and, that's the difference. You've got to wear on the side. Yeah. No, no, and I'm not... And the only, like my, I say, my, I'm not trying to... Yeah. My, only, my only concern, really, is, it, you know, if, if, he's, if he's doing this, you know, what's he going to try and do in the helicopter one day? But yeah. we can only go off what we've got, can't we? Going on aircraft, mate. Despite their suspicions, the team must treat the hoaxer as if his injury is genuine. He'll get the same care as any patient complaining of back pain after a fall. We've been to this gentleman probably two or three times before. Um, however, at least two of the events previously have been unwitnessed, whereas obviously this one is witnessed this time. Hey, everybody, my name's James. All right, I'm going to be back in the aircraft with you. All right, just pop your arms across. Is that hurting as we bounce you up? Yeah. I'm going to give you some medicine, obviously. We'll be able to get any IV access in you, so I'll give you some oromorph, all right? So we're going to find up to James Cook, and obviously any injuries will be ruled out there. A scan will be the only way of finding out if he's telling the truth, but he's certainly giving Andy cause for doubt. That's your question? Yep. You've probably heard what's been said about me. What's been, why, what's been said? It happened last time. All right. And someone thinks it's got against me. No, no. Nobody's no. got nothing against you, fella. I have changed. No, I... <laughs> You've had a you've had a good tumble from what witnesses have said. So. All right. Or did they see me? Sorry. Did they see it? Well, obviously the crew. That's what the crew's handed over. Yes. It's far from a straightforward medical case for James and Andy, but Chris offers a helpful suggestion. Maybe he needs to pack in climbing. Yeah. Not falling. Well, there is that, mate. Yeah, of course.
back near the white horse, the fire crew are still working to free their former boss from his wrecked car. His age and medical history mean the paramedics are growing increasingly concerned about his condition. As we were talking him through the next stage, he was sort of already, already very much aware of what was coming and the noises, and which can be quite daunting for a patient as uh, the roof's been taken off your car. The hydraulic cutters are inches from Bob's face. His Volkswagen is made from high-strength steel, far harder to take apart than the vehicles he once dealt with. Being cut out from a wrecked car is a traumatic experience, even for a former fire officer. Just slide a big board down your back now, Robert, all right? Uh, yes, hang on. Sorry? Go on, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're going to have to lean yeah, in forward. Obviously, there's concerns about a potential C-spine injury. It's quite an elder gentleman. We're not too sure if he's going to suffer arthritic diseases. So by using the extrication board, we've managed to keep everything in alignment. Oh. Do you want some more pain relief, Robert? Yes, please. Okay. Extreme caution is needed. He may well have a broken pelvis. Dislodging a fractured bone can cause blood vessels to rupture. You tell us if he says anywhere. Oh, left shoulder. You're pain in your left shoulder, is it? Right hip. Your right hip. OK. Lee fits a protective binder. This will help to stabilise Bob's pelvis. Right, let's get it struck on. Yep. Well, you didn't know if you actually fire your service then? Well, yeah. My father didn't get him down to Staffordshire. Right. I was in his college. Half the Oxford game. Nice. Retired. Retired. <laughs> you are clear till left. After a lifetime of public service, Bob finally gets his flight to the James Cook Hospital in Middlesbrough his rescue jeopardised by a serial abuser of the emergency services. He's being taken to the same trauma unit as the hoaxer. The man who claimed to have fallen at Richmond Castle is examined by doctors who can find no significant injuries. And for the fourth time this year, he walks out of hospital. It's since been discovered that he's been flown by three other air ambulances after similar hoax calls. He's received a final warning from the ambulance service. The elderly driver whose rescue was delayed by the hoax is still in hospital, suffering from complications caused by serious chest injuries. Farmer Phil was lucky to survive the attack by his own cattle. He had some serious facial injuries, but doctors were amazed scans showed none of his internal organs were damaged. He's now back at work, but wary of his herd. Before, you'd literally walk in and not sort of bat an eyelid, you would just get on, but now you've got to, it's always on the back of your mind. I think it'd have been knocked out, I, think, I don't think it'd have been here. Donna, the horsewoman who fell from her polo pony, broke her back. She can now only watch from the sidelines after surgeons implanted metal rods in her spine. I'm bionic. When I went back to the farm for the first time and saw the horses and, you know, they come up and said hello and I got very emotional. And amateur tree surgeon Judd Bruce is on the road to recovery after his 15-foot fall. He's now raising money for the air ambulance charity with items made from the tree that almost killed him. It's silver birch. It's the tree I was cutting down on Mother's Day. Uh, and I thought, it's, it's such a nice colour. It's a shame to take it to the tip and burn it. I'm not falling out of any more trees and doing this again. Give me square wood any day.